Welcome back to another in class. And today we're going to be talking with patent and trademark attorney extraordinaire Shantavia Johnson. And you can follow her at Shantavia J Esk for Esquire on all social media platforms. You can go to her website, Shantavia.com for any questions. Now, we have been doing these series because I think it's important that we understand our history. And I was just talking with somebody the other day. Part of this work is also kind of cultural anthropology, where we're excavating or digging up some old things that people have not seen and dusting it off and then creating kind of a museum of, of, of our works, you know, over time. And I love that you care about the history of people who have had patents and trademarks throughout our, our time here on earth. So thank you again for doing this. Always good to see you, Karen, and excited to talk to you today. So tell us who's the person that we're going to be delving into. So today, this is really an unsung hero, a Black woman, Mary Beatrice Kenner, who truly revolutionized women's lives through the, her invention, which was for a sanitary belt. And Mary Kenner was dynamic. She was born in 1912, so turn of the 20th century. And with her invention of the sanitary belt, she really changed the game for many women before she invented the sanitary belt. Most women were still using like old cloths or rags or whatever when they had their cycle. Right, pause, pause for a second because some brother's eyes glaze over, but you know, whatever. Uh, if a woman is on her period right now, you want to lean into this because it's super important to understand that this woman born in 1912, before she had this invention, women were doing even in the bible it talks about filthy rags we mm -hmm. were using imagine being in bondage and on your period out in the field with no way of gathering collecting all of that blood you know but we were very ingenious and this woman was so what you're telling me is she was one of the first people to come up with a sanitary belt she was the first and not only that so one of the really interesting things about mary kenner she grew up in a family of inventors so even her ancestors some of whom were enslaved some were not developed inventions and she was the next in a long line of inventors in her family okay so it was in her blood which which makes it even dope mary beatrice kenner All mary right. beatrice kenner Mm -hmm. Do you know what the patent number is? Because I think that that's very fascinating and we need to follow these breadcrumbs. Yes. So patent number, I looked this up, 2745406. She was the first really to invent a sanitary belt in this way. And one of the other interesting things about her is she had five patents in her lifetime, which made her likely the, the, the first Black woman to accumulate that many patents at that time. So she broke records even. This was her first invention, but not her last. Okay, and it was the precursor to what we have today, which is our maxi pads. Um, what is the significance of a patent number? 2745406, what, what does that matter? That indicates how many patents have been uh, issued by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So her patent was the 2,747,000. 745,406 patent in the United States at that time. Oh, okay. All right. So what happened with it? So she created this invention. It truly was revolutionary. There was a business, a company actually interested in the invention. They go to her house to meet her to talk about striking a deal. They figure out she's black and they leave. And so Nobody would work with her because she was. They figured out she was black. They came to her door and they were like, oh, she's black. They didn't have to figure it out, Shantavia. They looked at her <laughs> and they were like, how does black want? Nah, we not. So you're telling me a company major, what was it a pharmaceutical company? No, so this was a, 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 what you, a personal care company. Son Nap Pack was the name of the company. They, apparently the way they would do it in this time is go to your house and meet with you to talk about a deal. And when they got there, they saw she was black and she left, and they left. And the significance of this in particular is not only did they leave, but nobody would work with her. And so as your viewers may or may not know, pageants last for 20 years. And after that 20 year period, after you get 20 years, anybody can make, use, sell your invention. And so what these wait, companies- Wait, 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 Shantavia, because you're about to piss me off right now. <laughs> this woman 
revolutionized how women would have to sp spend their periods. Correct. And because of the color of her skin, the company would not work with her. And they were willing to wait her out the 20 years, and they did, and they basically stole her invention and created so, their own mind. So not just the company, the entire industry. The entire industry was waiting for this patent to expire. So it wasn't just this one company, it was the entire industry. When you think about the amount of money that translates to, so like today, the feminine sanitary pad industry is, think roughly 30 or $40 billion. And that entire industry is in part based on the sanitary bill, because there was nothing before this. The, the, the sanitary pads that we know of today came about maybe a decade or so later. But in the interim, these companies, not just one company, but the entire industry was using her invention without compensating her or giving her any credit. I think I read somewhere where Kim Kimberly Clark was one of them uh, as well. You know, as you like a sanitary belt when nobody else could, they gonna, they're going to wait you out because they know the laws are because they created them. And then you don't get compensated for the very thing that you come up. So she got nothing for this? To my understanding, she got nothing for this particular invention. Okay. So then what? What happened to Mary Beatrice Kenner? And I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about the frustration of having such a great, you know it's a great idea. Uh -huh. 20 years passes uh -huh. and you don't get anything. Uh -huh. Talk about what comes next with her. So because of her lineage, inventing was just in her blood. She invented four more things. She continued to create things that helped other people, that made the lives of other people better. And one in particular was a carrier attachment for a walker. Her sister got MS. And these, these inventions that she would create, they truly helped other people's lives. So she got four more patents. She owned a, 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 a flower shop and she lived out the rest of her life, but she never got credit for this invention. God bless. All right. So what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story today is if you are an inventor, Owning your intellectual property is critical. And the thing that Ms. Kenner understood, even at the, in the early to mid 1900s, was the value of having a patent. So that's the first lesson, value of having a patent. Number two, exploiting that technology. So she did all the right things. She tried to work with companies they wouldn't work with her. She didn't have the resources to sell it on her own. But what we can do today is own our own intellectual property and then negotiate, do things that Ms. Kenner couldn't do, but that we have, the do, we have the opportunity to do because of the sacrifices she made in not being able to exploit the value of her invention. I'm still a little bit, you know, uh, when, when you think about somebody, and I, I just looked up, she's a Taurus, like I am. So I feel kin, a kindred spirit. Her father uh, patented a window washer for trains. Mm -hmm. He invented a stretcher for wheels for, for ambulances. Her grandfather invented a light signal for trains. Mm -hmm. uh, that invention was stolen from him. And mm -hmm. you, you just think about all of the people who did the right thing too. Because she applied for a patent. She didn't just go out on the street corner and sell her, her, her pads, her, her sanitary belts, right? She didn't just come up with an idea and just go out there. She went through the right methods to, to get it patented and to, to do all of the right legal things, only to have uh, an industry basically conspire against her. I don't know that, uh, I do know what that feels like because it's Black in America, but you know, are there safeguards now? You know, like you said, there are things now that we can learn from what she had to go through and she paved the way. As we move forward, those people out there who are inventors, who are, you know, creators, what can you give them? So one of the things that is happening literally right now, so we're living actually through a historical period as it relates to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Congress is currently considering, and the United States Patent and Trademark Office is currently considering 
protective measures for people of color who are inventors, for women who are inventors, people who have historically been locked out of the pageant process and out of the innovation process. And so keep track of those things, write your, your representatives, tell them you want to see certain reforms and measures being passed. There's a lot happening right now in this space specifically to combat what happened with Mary Beatrice Kenner and many others like her. Well, I look at uh, Shantavia, Shantavia Johnson as, you know, uh, a modern day heroine who is making sure that Mary Beatrice Kenner and so many men and women like her will never, ever uh, go without us knowing who they are. So let me just thank you for this work. Um, and you're, you have this uh, excitement around this, you know, when we talk about patents and look, at, look your whole face lights up. Uh, because, you know, it, it speaks to the fortitude that we have and you help so many people with their businesses. So if somebody out there is in the midst of, you know, coming up with an idea or what have you, can they reach out to you? Oh, of course. So Shantavia.com is the best way to get in touch with me. I actually have a brand and business academy where I teach people how to start their business from ground zero, particularly with an eye toward protecting their intellectual property and exploiting their intellectual property. Shantavia, S-H-O-N-T-A-V-I-A. Got it. Um, yes. <laughs> Let me thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this. Mary Beatrice Kenner, the sanitary napkin, the sanitary belt. Mary Beatrice Kenner, share that with your children, share that with your relatives, share her story, follow these breadcrumbs, go find out more information about her. Let's keep her immortalized. And thank you so much, Shantavia, for being here today. Thank you, Ken. Shantavia Johnson, Shantavia JS on the Twitters and Shantavia.com. Follow her and subscribe. Subscribe to this channel. Okay, we'll be back.